I'm going to show you how to create colourful glass using Redshift's new standard material. Let's get this ting popping! Shoo. We'll start off by grabbing a cube which will be used as our glass object. We've used a cube instead of a plane as it's important for glass to have thickness so that we get good looking refractions. I'll reshape this into a long rectangular shape as we'll be deforming this soon. We don't need it to be as thick, a value of 0.5 should work well. Let's add a slight bevel to the edges which will give us some cool reflections later on. That's a good looking bevel. Let's switch to constant shading lines and add some segments to our cube. These additional segments will be important for when we start to deform our cube. We're going to use a spline wrap to create our deformed cube so let's start by creating our spline. Grab your polygon pen. You can click and drag to create curved points and then push, pull and rotate these points until you're happy. Once you're happy with the shape you've created, let's create a spline wrap deformer. Hold shift while you select it to make it a child of your current object. Then grab your spline and drop it in the spline parameter. This doesn't look right so let's fix this by changing the axis to plus Z. Let's change the mode to keep length so that our object doesn't become stretched. Once you have this set up you may have to adjust your spline to ensure you don't have any intersections. You can also go into the rotation tab of the spline wrap to adjust the angle of your shape. I continue to faff with this for the next 10 minutes or so, but here it is in 10 seconds so you don't have to endure the pain of watching me move points around. I also changed the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 and found a nice camera angle. Let's drop this into a subdivision surface to check it looks good. Shout out to the kind souls in my previous video for telling me that you can use the shortcut Q to quickly enable and disable your subdivision surface. Okay, this looks good, so let's use a redshift object tag to subdivide this instead. Go to the geometry tab and enable tessellation which will subdivide divide it in the render view whilst keeping it low poly in the viewport. Bye bye! Okay let's get this party started. Let's create a redshift standard material. Drag this onto our lovely cube object. Let's increase the metalness to give us a shiny metal material so we can see how it reacts to the light. Of course it would help if we had a light so let's add a dome light. I'm going to load one of these HDRIs from Grayscale Gorillas Pro Studios HDRI pack. The abstract nature of these HDRIs will give us soft yet interesting reflections. We'll rotate our dome light to see what gives us the most interesting result. I also ended up adjusting the spline to give us a more interesting interesting shape. Playing with the rotation and angle of the object helps to add more variation to the lighting. This looks more interesting to me. One final rotation of the HDRI and we'll be good to go. Okay let's dive into creating this glass material. We'll disable the metaness and the base weight and scroll down and enable transmission. This looks cool already with the lighting and shape we have set up. Straight away we'll dive into the render settings and crank up the reflection and refraction depth to bring more detail into the glass. I'll take a screenshot to compare the before and afters. We'll head to the globals tab and we'll crank out the refraction to 6 and then the combined depth to 12. We'll take another screenshot so we can compare the results. We can see a clear difference in how the additional trace depths help to dial in more detail. Let's disable materials so our viewport is clearer. We'll start by dialing in some colour to our transmission. This will be used to tint our glass. You can make this as saturated as you want but I find a low saturation value feels more natural. We'll play with this until we're happy. The orange colour looks cool. I want to talk about this depth slider next. This value describes the distance after which the transmission colour is completely reached within the material. So this can be used to control how much of our transmission colour comes through. This will depend on the thickness and volume of your object so the values inputted will vary from object to object. A low value of 0.5 gives us a nice result here. We then have this scatter colour which we can use alongside the depth parameter to create a secondary colour which will be scattered throughout the object as the light hits it. This will then become a juggling act of finding the right depth amount which strikes a balance between the transmission colour and scatter colour. The blend of orange and red gives us quite an interesting look. Let's head back to that metalness slider we used earlier and start to stylize this glass. If we enable the metalness and the base colour you can see we start to pick up those lovely reflections from our HDRI. Using a 0.5 value in our metalness essentially creates a 50% blend between a glass and metal material. We can then adjust our base colour to tint our metal and now we have this cool shiny glass material. If we crank metalness all the way up to 1 we get a really cool result but we're starting to lose the translucency of our glass. We need to find a way to blend between the two. This is where the for now node comes in. Press Shift C in your shader graph to bring up the node menu and search for for now. Let's output this to the surface to see what it does. This essentially creates a black to white map based on whether your object is facing to or perpendicular to the camera. You can then play with the index of refraction to affect this black to white map. We can then use a ramp node to recolor this. We'll plug this into our metalness and see how it's looking. Shoo! If we increase the ramp back up to a white color we should see more of that metalness come through. Likewise, if we change the dark grey back to black, we'll get zero metalness in that area and instead see our glass material. As we start to clamp this black value down, we'll remove the areas of metalness being shown. We can then bounce back and forth between the ramp and the for now node until we get a result we're happy with. Let's scroll down and add a tiny bit of roughness to our reflection which will give us a slightly frosted look. We also have this coat feature which acts as a second layer of reflection, so we can enable this to make those metal reflections really pop. We'll come back and make this more exciting later. You can see if we rotate our dome light around 
background, we get all sorts of interesting reflections from the metalness we added. So this is the basic setup for our tinted metallic glass, but let's use a couple more techniques to make this even more exciting. I quickly just adjust our ramp node to make our glass more visible and clamp our metalness down. At the moment, we're just using solid colors to drive the tint of our glass, but what if we used more than one tone? We'll drop a ramp node down and output this to the surface. At the moment, we can see that it isn't mapping properly to our object, so let's fix that. We'll disable our spline wrap and create a backup of our object in case we need it in the future. Let's make sure our material is set to flat projection. We'll then hit C on our keyboard to make this object editable. Let's delete our current UVW coordinate. We'll then press Shift C whilst in the viewport to bring up our menu and search for Generate VW Coordinate. Make sure you have your object and your material selected, otherwise this option may be greyed out. Now if we enable our object, we can see the ramp is properly mapped across our object. We'll hop back into our camera and start to work into this material. Let's start by plugging this into the refraction colour. We'll disable metalness real quick and then look at this refraction colour. Let's look at some cool colourways for this refraction. This red to orange looks interesting and if we turn down the depth amount we can let more of that colour come through. We now want to add some variation throughout our material, let's drop down a colour correct node. Now we can control the hue, saturation and brightness of our ramp all through this node. This becomes a really elegant setup where we start to create more than one and plug these into different parameters of our material. For example, we could plug this one into the scatter colour and then adjust the hue slightly so we have a different absorption colour. You can fiddle with this until you're happy, I decided to tone it back to a subtle orange and red duo tone. Let's plug our metalness back in and enable our base colour. We can repeat the same process and plug a colour correct node into the base colour and adjust the parameters to create some variation. We'll do the same with the coat colour which will really help to add that secondary colour. It's also worth experimenting with the IOR of the coat as you can get some really interesting results. We'll plug this into the coat colour and watch the magic happen. Now we're getting some really cool results and the beauty of using the ramp node as the core ingredient is that we can change the gradient and it will update everything. So we could change this to a blue slash purple gradient and get a completely different result. The beauty of these types of materials is that you can create so many cool results just from playing with different angles and lighting. If you've made it this far, comment, that's some good looking glass, and I'll give you the project file for free. I'm going to let this video run but I just want to quickly say a massive thank you for all the support on last week's video, the complete guide to creating CG bottle renders, the support and all the engagement, all the comments, all the likes, everything has just been really, really overwhelming and I really, really appreciate it because it took quite a lot of time to record and edit and put that video together so all the support is, you know, greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, it's really kind of blown all my other videos out of the water so yeah it just means a lot to me um, and thank you to everyone for the recent support we've just hit 20k subs so huge milestone another one hit and you know I can't wait for another 20,000 more of you guys to join so thank you again for everyone watching and I will catch you in the next one all right peace